Hey, welcome to Aircraft Anything. Today I'm working again on the 2017cc CB Performance Builder's Choice Engine Kit. Um, the engine is nearing completion. I have pretty much done most things. I'm going to be working today on the oil lines for the full flow. So the oil line coming out of the oil pump, which is what I'm going to be focusing on today. Um, and then in another episode, I'll, once the engine is installed in the vehicle, I'll be looking at the oil lines and where I'm going to put the filter, where I'm going to put the oil cooler, where I'm going to put the thermostat. So I've got some of these parts here. I've got them um, sitting on the bench here. I have the CB Performance oil filter mounts. I have got myself, this didn't come with the kit, I got this separately. Someone advised me to get one of these and this is a mechanical oil thermostat um, switch. So your oil goes in um, and if the temperature is below a certain um, level, I think 80 degrees, um, it just reroutes it back um, to the engine and only sends it out to the cooler if it goes over 80 and then the cooler can start um, cooling. Uh, the cooler comes with a thermostat that turns the fan on when the oil reaches a certain temperature but even without the fan the oil going through those small lines and through the heat uh, the cooling fins it's going to cool it down and it will take longer for the engine to get up to temperature. So the idea of this is the engine gets up to temperature especially as I'm in the UK um, where if you're driving it in January, February, it can be pretty cold. Uh, so, now, the kit came with an oil pump cover with the oil pump, which is a full flow, so it has an outlet coming out the oil pump cover. Now, I've recently got myself a fancy moustache bar uh, that's an aftermarket market one made by a guy here in the UK who, under the name Game Changer. You can find him on Facebook. Um, it took a while to arrive, so the build of the engine has been delayed. It's supposed to have taken four weeks, it took four months. Um, but it's arrived and it's a nicely made piece of kit. And the good thing about this is if I wanted to lower the bus um, in future, which I might well do, because uh, I have a habit of lowering vehicles, uh, it gives you more clearance. Although the exhaust I've chosen, the Sidewinder exhaust from A1, um, will prohibit me from going super low. Not that I would go super low anyway, because I don't want to get involved in tubbing. Anyway, that's another story. If we look at the oil pump cover that's on the vehicle, that's, that came with the kit that's on there now, you can see that there are some issues, and I'll show you those now. So we kind of zoomed in. So here's the oil pump cover. This is the moustache bar. Now, if this was going in a beetle, the moustache bar wouldn't be there and you just take your oil line straight out. That's where the oil line comes out. It's a 3 8 NPT fitting. So it's one of those slightly conical um, fittings. Now you can get adapters. You can get these, you can get a right angle adapter like this, which screws in, still not enough room. Or you can get a 45 degree one like this still wouldn't fit in. Could get it to work if I modified this and cut it. But if you look, the cover, the outlet from the cover, that's the edge of the pump here. It sticks out by, I don't know, a quarter of an inch. So with it sticking out, that's, what, that's what's making um, the clearance issues worse than they need to be. So the guy that supplied the moustache bar said, oh, you can get different covers which fit flush. For instance, you can get this one. It's a CSP, made in Germany, and you can see that it's a, th I'm not sure what the outlet on this one is. Yeah, it's 3 8 MPT, same. It's flush with the edge of the, the case, so that would work. Or, what I'm going to actually put on there is, it's rather gorgeous, Jean Berg pump cover. Really heavy duty, cast iron, and built into it, is an oil pressure relief valve. Now I'm gonna open this up and show you how that works. So I've opened it up and it comes with a nice set of instructions. 
um, it tells you how to install it um, and what to do. So inside here is a spring and a ball bearing and if the oil pressure gets too high it rel relieves the pressure by letting some oil out of this small hole. This is the hole it comes out of um, and comes out into your full flow system. When the pressure gets too high the valve opens and it dumps the oil back inside uh, to the gears um, where the oil is coming out of the case so it kind of recirculates it around um, back into the pump. Um, so it's a, it's a good idea, unless it fails and it sticks open, in which case you're going to experience low oil pressure. Um, and your light's not going to go off, or, um, or you're going to see on your gauge it's low pressure. In, wh in which case you need to switch the engine off and probably t take the spring and the ball bearing out and sort it. Now in I looked at a review, I was looking up for reviews on these and I found a, a video by Easy Jeezy and if you don't already su subscribe to Easy then you really should because uh, he's got years and years of experience and I, I've learned a hell of a lot from looking at his channel. Um, he was saying that you shouldn't, when you put the gasket on the cover, you shouldn't use any sealant, um, which is what I always have done, so I won't be doing that in future. Um, I have a new, on the shelf, have a new uh, seal ready to go on with the holes in it which are needed um, so we need to take the old cover off to do that I have to take the pulley off um, I've already set the tension on the on the uh, fan belt um, I've talked down the the pulley so it's I'm gonna get my uh, fly will um, get my pulley puller out um, so that I can take off the the uh, pulley wheel engine tin so that's what we'll do now and I'll I'll do that sped up I think So we got all apart, cleaned up the sealant that was on the gasket and I'm really glad I'm doing this because the sealant was a little bit in this circular groove which runs around the oil pump and what Easy was explaining is there is a, another channel which um, comes off that circle and that's a low point in pressure where the oil has been drawn out of the case and any oil that escapes and gets into that ring is drawn back in and that's what stops your leaks so you should fit these dry. Now reading the Gene Berg instructions um, that come with the, the cover it says um, da -da -da, let's see if I can find it um, I recommend a coat of light grease on the oil pump gears because this assures faster priming. Squirt the pump full of oil after the full flow cover is installed to give it a good prime. So that's a good little tip. So I'm going to add axle grease and I'm going to do what he says. I'm going to put a little bit of grease on these gears. Smear, not too much. I don't want too much on there. I should show you what I'm doing. I'll show you on this one. So, whilst I've got these gears out, I sort of talked about this before, but if you notice on this gear, there is a, a dot on that tooth. Similarly, there is a dot 
on that tooth. Now, how do I put these together? Do I put them like thus? Or like thus? I don't know. I'm just going to put them whatever way they're going. Put with the dots together. So, that's all nice and clean, clear of contaminants. I'm just going to wipe my hands before I put these in actually. Now this is interesting. Just to looking at the, the CB performance cover that's come off. And you'll note that the outlet is this sort of like oval shape, like a running track sort of shape. And it matches up perfectly with the outlet on the the pump, so the oil comes in this side, the cogs turn through and force the pump to this side and it squeezes it out through this hole out here and then around your full flow system. Now, it sits on the engine that way up. If we look at the Gene Berg one, it is like a stock hole. So it's forcing the oil's coming from here and being forced out of this outlet here. Now, what I did, what I did is I made a template, a very rough template out of paper, um, and then I marked it cover and pump. So that's the cover side, and then I looked at it on the engine, and yet those holes pretty much match up perfectly well. But then, when we put the template on the Gene Berg, you can see that the hole matches up, but not down here. So do I just run it like this? I mean, the oil's still going to be forced into there. Um, or what I think I'm going to do is, is I'm going to mark this area here and there's enough material for me to get a die grinder and just put a shoulder in so keep that circular hole but like there's a shoulder here just put a shoulder in just to um, help the flow of oil on this cover that's what i'm going to do so what i've done is, is i've just plopped the template on and you can just about see with a sharpie i've just marked roughly where that shoulder needs to go and i'm just going to get a die grinder and I'm going to very carefully take a little bit of material out, bit by piece. There we go, scalloped out, bunch of material to help the oil flow in. And if you look at the template, it sort of matches up quite well. And when it goes on the engine, um, that is gonna help the oil flow out of here a little bit better, because part of this hole is covered up. So that it, increase the uh, diameter of this closed up hole so that we can continue to flow. Next thing to do is get rid of these scuff marks which is going to take ages and I uh, wish I'd been a bit more careful but that's what we're going to do now. And I'm going to take the worst of it off with the 80 brick. Clean water, clean the part, uh, now 240. I haven't got any 120. Fresh water again, clean part, 400. And there you go, that's cleaned up. Um, still just about see those scratches I made, but I can't feel them with my nail. And the inside the gasket anyway, the gasket, the ring, the oil ring, so it should be okay. So now I'm gonna we're going to take 
this pressure release spring out. I'm going to clean it all out with uh, warm water and then dry it off with an air hose and then clean it out with my favourite WD-40. Right, it's held in with an Allen head bolt. It's, of course, it's an American manufactured part, um, so it's an American size, it's 3 8 God, it doesn't want to move. I don't want to break it. I think I'm going to have to put that in the vise. Put it in the vise and some rubber. Let's see if we can get crack. Oh my god. Is it in? Properly in. And there's all this bump in the Gene Berg book saying. Uh, be careful not to over tighten because it will break, and if you break it, you won't get your money back. There's no way. I won't put anywhere near as much pressure on this thing as I am right now. That's not moving. For some reason, is it, is it a left hand thread? Why would it be a left hand thread? No. Should have done this before I've done all this work on it. I'm gonna to have to move you guys over. I don't know if we can just swing a cat in this place. There we go, it's broken now. Wow, that was on tight. Boy. That is properly in. Shorter than I was anticipating. Uh, Loctite. There is a washer. Oh, it looks like a washer. Yeah. Spring. There's a spring. And I'm glad I'm taking this apart because it is filthy dirty in there. And then there's a ball bearing. A little sort of like cup washer. So it came out cup washer first, then ball bearing. So I take it the spring sits on the little cup. So all of this needs to be cleaned. I'll put these little bits in that bowl of water I've got and take this inside and I'm going to rinse it through with hot water and then I'm going to bring it in, dry it off, clean it out. Right, it's washed and <coughs> so it's washed and dried off. But before I clean the insides out thoroughly with WD-40 and the component parts that go inside, the spring, the cup washer, the ball bearing, and clean up the threads on the very difficult to remove Allen bolt, um, I'm going to test fit it um, with the, I'm going to go with a 45 degree adapter because I think goes in quite nice and tight like that and that's going to be fine but I think it's sticking out way too much um, and it's not going to clear the moustache bar so I'm going to have to tap the 3 uh, 3 3/8 MPT deeper and I haven't got 3 8 tap so I'm going to have to wait another three or four days for that to come in the post which is a bit annoying because I just wanted to get this done today um, but we'll test fit it and we'll have a look as I feared um, it does actually go on, but there's no room for what is going to be um, AN8 
I've currently got an AN10 on here, but I'm going to I'm going to go down to AN8 because um, I think AN10 is overkill. Um, so it's going to be an AN8 fitting coming up here, and there's not enough room. If it was in um, by a quarter of an inch, there's just about going to be you know enough room to get an AN8 AN8 fitting in there, um, but it's going to be tight. Um, so. Yeah, I need to re-tap this. And let's just hope there's enough room. There should be enough room. That's why I wanted to leave a little bit of extra material when I was scalloping this out, because I was suspecting that that tap is going to get deeper. So we'll have to get ourselves one of those taps. Can't believe how dirty this thing is. Gene Berg, you're a dirty boy. Well, sadly you're no longer with us, but... That was a dirty piece of kit. Um, it doesn't look too bad. I don't think CB Performance is going to be too happy about a Gene Berg um, pump cover in one of their kits. But um, their pump cover just doesn't fit with a, when you're attaching it to a bus. And they knew, they knew this engine was going in a bus because I talked to them about, you know, the best power torque what kit's best for um, a heavy vehicle like a bus. So they knew full well it was going in a bus, but they still supplied it anyway. Um, I mean, I guess their answer would be you can modify your moustache bar. Um, to which, of course, I could. Um, I wonder if... We went the other way. Oh yeah, maybe, maybe going, yeah, actually it fits, it's going to fit better with it going down and out that way, which is kind of more eloquent way of doing it. So I need to order three eighths MPT tap and I need to order a 3 8 to 8 an 45 degree swivel connector. So I've had some of the fittings turn up, some of the AN8 fittings turn up. Um, pretty much all bar one I think I'm going to need to install the full flow system from the fuel pump back to the case via an oil filter which came from CB Performance an external oil cooler which came from CB Performance and thanks to one of uh, you guys watching Matthew, I think it was, a uh, thermostatic um, uh, valve, mechanically operated, um, which cuts out the fan when the oil's not quite up to temperature. Uh, and also, so all the fittings and some stain, three metres of stainless hose, which I think should just about be enough. Now, no one tells you this, but all of those fittings um, and the hose, and this is not the components, just the, these AN8 fittings and the hose, 160 pounds. <laughs> Everyone's like, don't, you don't want to use the push fit and Jubilee clip because they can pop off under pressure. I mean, do they? I don't know. Um, but yeah, super expensive. So what I'm going to try and do is I just, I. Obviously we modified uh, the pump cover, the Jeanberg pump cover. I've given it a good clean and all the components good clean. And I wound in the um, 3 8 MPT. And I think I can pretty much, without having to re-tap it, because my tap hasn't turned up yet, so I'm being a bit impatient. I need it to be sort of like that, this sort of setup, like that. And then that will get behind the moustache bar. Um, I'm being a bit impatient. I'm going to see if I can wind it round. I'm not going to force it. I'm going to see if I can wind it round and get it tight to that sort of a, uh, an angle. Um, and there's a warning that comes with the uh, the cover from Jeanberg. With all the Jeanberg stuff, you always get fantastic instructions. And the instruction says, do not over tighten because it's cast um, piece and it will break. And if it breaks you know you're not getting your money back 
Uh, it wasn't cheap, it was £80 just for the cover. So um, I'm going to tighten it and see how we go. Hopefully it won't crack. Have the cover in the vise. I have the 45 degree 3 8 NPT adapter and I have um, some thread sealant. High, it's high temperature thread sealant for automotive uses. Um, it says on the Jeanberg instructions to not use PTFE tape. Um, and I've read that in other places as well. I'm not using it anywhere on this engine because the particles can come off and clog stuff up. And apparently that's a big cause of failures on the uh, little tiny ball bearing inside on the relief valve on this particular cover. He says he promises that in the instructions a failure will be caused by particles and they say not to use uh, the tape. To be fair, I have used in the past on oil pressure switches and a good reason because this little tiny tube, I can't remember, I think I said in another video how much it was, but it was this tiny tube, probably enough to do the engine, the engine was super duper expensive. So I'm hoping, I mean, I got quite close on a test Titan. I got quite close. I'm hoping that that's the sort of angle I want. Um, mm, getting kind of quite tight. I'm not sure it's going to go around all that way because it's a flared, um, MPT national pipe thread is flared to make a good seal and I'm worried if I go any more than that it's going to crack. It's got to come quite a long way. Um, it seems to be still moving. You don't know how much pressure it's putting on the outside of this case. Let's have a look. It's a tough old piece. I mean, that's, it's got to come round another quarter turn. So let's keep going. I'm putting quite a lot of pressure on it. I am, I'm not going to do it. I've got a tap coming next week and we will revisit this next week. Yeah, so some of the of the brass has, has, sh has shearing off. So that was getting close, I think, to, uh, to breaking my cover. So I will clean all these bits up we will get the tap and we will turn the tap in an extra quarter turn, um, maybe a little bit over a quarter turn, um, and then we'll get this in and then I can start putting it all together. Whilst we're waiting for the pipe tap to turn up to finish off the pump cover, we can attach the AN fittings to the other components. So I'm going to look at doing the filter mount and the thermostat. So this is the thermostat. It's an MP piece stamped with MP. Um, it's marked E1, E2, C1, C2. And in the packet, there's folded up in the packet, there's a little bit of paper which tells you um, what those mean, where, where the oil is coming in and going out and, and around and about. A um, couple of things to say about this. This is the second one I've had. I've got the first one out of the packet. Um, oh, this is like three or four weeks ago. Um, and I just test fitted the push style 3 8 um, and they all screwed in nicely, apart from one of them. Um, and the thread was obviously damaged. Uh, I, you know, and I considered, well, I um, considered, well, I can get a, uh, a 3 8 uh, tap, an NPT tap, which I've got on order anyway for the cover. But then all the little, it's a mechanical device. I'm not sure if you can see in there, there's like a spring um, and a piston 
just mechanical and I didn't want all the you know like the the shavings from re-tapping it going inside and, and messing it up so it doesn't work so I sent it back um, and the supplier just sent out a new one the other thing to note about these things is obviously I could have taken it apart there's like a C clip here so I could have taken it all apart to clean it out anyway um, but I didn't want to get involved in that just thought just get a new one sent um, the other thing to know about it is there's no holes or means to mount it so once you've got your oil lines in then you're gonna have to use the hoses um, to clamp it somewhere to mount it up so I don't entirely know um, how I'm going to do that yet. The way I'm planning on doing this is I'm not starting the engine on the bench. I'm not doing the cam burn on the bench. I'm going to take a risk and I'm going to put the engine in the vehicle uh, and I'm going to do the cam burn in the vehicle and I'm going to do all the finishing off, like the plumbing of the oil lines, the actual, you know, making the oil lines and fitting them in the vehicle so it's nice and neat and out of the way because I can't predict where, how and where it's all going to go. So that's going to take some time to do but what i can do is i can fit all of my uh mpt fittings mpt i mean i've got i've got a big bag of them here i can start fitting the an fittings so these are the swivel type no there are they no, they're not the civil type. Not the civil type. Um, civil types on the other end I put. So these these just screw in and you tighten them up a wee bit and then there'll be four of those and then you attach get it off. The hose goes in here. And then you squeeze it on, get the thread started, and hopefully it mounts on nicely and creates a great seal. Um, so I'm just going to fit these to this, and also the oil filter, which has got mounting points. Don't know where I'm going to put this yet. Um, might mount it underneath. I've seen some people mount it underneath the battery tray, so sideways like that. So I might do that. Um, yeah, we'll have a look and we'll see how to do that. That's this is this one's clearly marked in and out, so you know which way you're um, plumbing it in. It's a lot more self-explanatory. This is a CV performance part. Um, came in a pack like that, um, and I've already wound in the thread which came separate and I've put some red Loctite on that because we don't want that coming out. We're vibrating um, the canister, the, the filter loose. Um, and this is the one that came from CV Marley. So obviously that just screws on standard for oil filter. I say standard, not standard for me. I've never run a, 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 any of my air cools with an external oil filter. So let's get these in. So we'll just go through the first one um again this super expensive thread sealant which i hope isn't going to run out halfway through doing all of this i mean it shouldn't really need this the whole point of these pipe threads is that because they're tapered they make a super good seal but you know belt and braces i'm trying to eke it out as much as i can Probably put too much on there. Oops, beg your pardon. Just gonna wipe it off from the end. Don't want any of that sealant going into the mechanicals. And then it pops in, he says. And it should just wind in and then we'll snug it down that's going quite a nice long way which is good and it's this is a 26 across the flat 
Um, I haven't got any Imperial spanners. The 25 doesn't quite go on, so I'm just using a 26, but it hasn't got to be that tight, so. There we go. Oh, it is a swivel type, so that does swivel. That's good. Um, so there we go. Well, it being a swivel type makes it very easy to tighten this up on the vehicle without, you know, twisting your hoses. So I will do the other three and I will show you when I'm done. So there we have it, the AN10's in. Makes it quite a bit of a beast, doesn't it? Big old thing. I mean, these more weight to carry around. Uh, we're going to do this next. So we'll get this in the vise and we'll wind these two in. And I'll come back to you when I've done that. It's exactly the same procedure. So I've got another two of these, three eighths, and we'll put some thread sealant on there which i think is running out so i'm gonna have to buy another one of those which is a bit annoying and these screw in these don't go in quite as far i don't think let's have a look and they're not going to go in as far as they did on the thermostat but they go in like thus so there we have it Filter mount finished. So we have inline ther oil thermostat and filter finished. It's got, I mean, it's all very chunky stuff, isn't it? So the next thing to do is to fit the AN fittings to the oil cooler. And this is a bit more of a, a fiddly thing. It comes with a whole bunch of instructions because it has an inline thermostat which switches the fan on when the oil gets to a certain temperature. So I don't really know if this electronic thermostat is needed in conjunction with this. Uh, I'll look up the temperature on this and see what temperature the oil starts flowing to the fan with this. And if it's the same temperature as the inline thermostat, then I don't really see any point in running the inline ther thermostat. Although I suppose it means that when you turn the uh, the vehicle on, the fan won't be running the whole time, which will be a bit quieter, although the engine's going to be quite noisy anyway. Um, so I think I will fit the inline thermostat, just talking out loud with you guys. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to fit the AN fittings to the oil cooler. Here's the cooler. It's a long time since I've had it out of the box. and I've just been through the installation instructions. It's all uh, quite daunting when you open it up and you see all of these parts. Then you, know, you read the instructions and it's actually pretty straightforward. There doesn't appear to be, be any particular inlet or outlet for the cooler. You can do it either way. When looking at the diagram, it shows uh, the thermostatic switch going on the inlet and you can see the fan clearly on the top of the picture. Well, you can't see the fan on this side, it's just the cooling fins. Uh, then, if you look at another picture, where you see the fan on top, the inline is on the other side. So one picture has in here, other picture has in here. So that leads me to believe it doesn't really matter. The oil just, is just going to flow around. It doesn't matter which way it goes around. So you get with it a whole bunch of parts, you get a bunch of brass parts and adapters, Jubilee clips. These are all push on, the brass ones are all push on type. Uh, there's some sort of like adapters. I'm not even, not even gonna look at how they go together like that, I guess. Um, there is some cable ties and some electrical connect, spade electrical connectors, bits and pieces. There are some, AN8 push fit uh, fittings, I'll get that bag so you can see. So female on that end, and then push fit on that end, which are quite nice, I'll definitely be keeping those. 
There's a whole bunch of those. And there are nuts and bolts for mounting it, the four holes. There's four holes, one, two, three, four, for mounting it. Um, keep those, although I think I'll probably just use stainless ones if they're not stainless. But these are the, the four components that come with it that you're going to need, what I'm going to need. We have a fitting with an O-ring. So there is an O-ring on that. And that is male a um, 8 an and these simply wind into the inlet and outlet it says in instructions no need for thread sealant with the o-ring fittings so these are just the plugs to stop rubbish getting in there so these go in like this get a big old wrench on them Now it says in instructions to double wrench on when you're tightening these up so that you don't damage the core. It also says once you first fire it up, quickly check for leaks. So obviously leaks do happen. So I haven't got to take these off and put thread sealant on them. So that's those installed. So they are the male AM fittings. And that's as far as the kit goes with the outlet. So I'm going to say let's do this as the inlet. Now this is a special adapter and it is... AN, 8AN, male on one end, uh, female on one end, male on the other. And here is your thermostatic switch. It says to install this by hand, do not over tighten because you'll damage the thing. It also says to use some thread sealer on it. It quite clearly says do not use tape because the tape, and, then, and they're not talking about for reasons of um, particles getting in your oil, which is good enough reason in my book, but because it will change the thermodynamics of the component. So just push that around there like that. Just put it over my fingers. And this screws into here. It is very loose. Surely that is going to leak. And if you look down the hole, you can see it pokes out and runs through the oil. And then there's a little bit of thread sealant come through just on the end of the thread there. So I know that the sealant has gone all the way through. So let's hope when that dries, it stops it leaking. So if it's going to leak anywhere, it's going to leak there. Then this being an AN fitting screws on. And then we'll get a wrench on that, or as we say in Britain, a spanner. There we go. And that's as far as your fittings on the kit come. I have purchased separately some swivel hose adapters, which are lucky, I guessed. And they're right so they're female on this end and then they're eight an hose fittings on this end so these simply screw onto here and here and then we will tighten those up probably should just want to give these a pretty good snug in Here we go. And 
again I'm putting a spanner on wrench on the core so I don't twist the core and damage the core create any cracks there we go again these AN fittings are way chunky so we're going to make this the inlet and we're going to make this the outlet so oil coming in cold oh, sorry rather oil coming in hot going through the cooler cooled by the fan coming out cooler lovely so that is that done as far as the plumbing is concerned now there's some electrics to look at and i'm gonna have a quick read of this and get back to you so i'm going to attempt to do the wiring on this i've taken the insulation sleeve off and exposed the two cables um, one is negative, one is positive. I've got no idea about American automotive um, wiring. In fact, I'm, I hate wiring. I, um, I'm colour blind, so I find it very hard, but I can see that these are black and blue, so that's, that's good. I just phoned up the company that manufactured this to Rayleigh Performance to ask which is um, the ground and which is the positive, and the black is the ground and the blue is the positive. So all you do is you attach that somewhere to the chassis. And what I'm gonna do is, is there's four mounting holes and I'm gonna make the lead big enough to attach to, uh, long enough rather, to attach to um, this mounting point. And that will be, that will be the ground. Now it, it's got a, a ring connector that comes with it, but the ring connector that comes with it isn't big enough to do that. So we'll save that for another job. So I've got one out of my uh, box of stuff and uh, we will use that one. So I've got a whole bunch of Fancy Pants new wiring tools because I'm going to be doing a little bit of wiring on another vehicle. So I bought a, a set of wire strippers, proper wire strippers, and I bought a proper ratchet crimping tool. Uh, so I never used these before. Um, so we'll, we'll give them a go. So I'm going to cut this about yay, yay long. So that's the length it's going to be. And then we'll cut this one in a bit. I'm going to put the sleeve back on. So we want the sleeve to be... Let's use this bit, it's a bit nicer. the sleeve to be about yay long so we'll cut that save that thread both the wires through it's always nice and easy on a short piece like this it gets a bit more tricky doesn't it when you've got longer pieces so let's try this out how does that work so, get it in the right hole. Wow! Before now, I've always used a knife and cut around and done it that way. Damn, that has done a proper good job. So, I use the supplied connector. And then we'll try out, oh no, wrong one, isn't it? This is the ground, foolish boy. So we'll try this crimping tool. And there's a right way and a wrong way to do this. And you want, let's try it in this one first. Ah. Maybe it's not the right sort of, because I've got these for working on brass fittings, you know. That has mashed it up. I don't think I'm going to get the fitting out now. Yeah.
Well, it's firmly, firmly in there. So, we'll get. Here we go. It's not the, not the prettiest of connections, but it is on there firmly, and that will attach nicely to that. Mounting point, so we'll do the positive now. Um, and so you can you can attach this to any of these the two spades on the thermostat switch, and then you have positive coming from the battery via the ignition, so your fan doesn't start running the whole time um, whilst the engine is switched, whilst your vehicle switched off. So we'll cut that to there. I'm going to use my fancy new strimming tool. Oh my god, I love that. That's revolutionary. Me. Pop them in there. Ah, this is set up for uh, such a connection like, like this. So I think the thing to do, wedge your connector in, put your wire in, and crimp away. That's better. Solid. There we go. So that's as far as I can go today. Can't do any more. I will put pop that on there. We'll use that when we get to install it on the car. So that's ready to go back in the box. Great, that's about all I can do today on the oil lines. I can't do any more. Uh, you need the engine in the vehicle, mount all these components underneath, around and about the engine bay, and then I can cut the hoses. And I've bought a fancy hose cutting tool because I'm always cutting uh, oil hose and fuel hose with a blade, and it makes quite a rough sort of cut. So I bought a pair of proper hose cutting shears, and you just put the hose in and shink, cut them. So, which is very handy for this for the uh, braided hose for these oil lines. Got my 3 8 MPT tap in the post. So we're gonna tap out the, the oil cover and see if we can get that adapter twisted around to the right place. For my calculations, I just need to tap this out by a quarter of a turn. So we'll just screw the tap in. There we go. And lucky I have a super big tool for this. Right, I can feel it biting now, so it just needs a quarter turn. Let's see if that's that was enough. Right, 
actually cut something that time. And that's what we want. So we'll loosen this off. We'll clean it all out because obviously now the pump cover is covered in little tiny bits of metal. And we'll clean all this off and then we'll put it together. I'm not sure if you can see in there, but there's little shavings and stuff. So first thing to do is we'll blow it out with air then I'm going to run it through the warm tap. Then I'm going to blow it out with air again. And then we will clean it with WD-40. Ready to install the adapter. Put some of the lovely liquid thread sealant on. Don't have any leaks here, do we? I mean, that would require partial tear down of the pulley and all of that. So we're gonna make absolutely sure we're getting no leaks here. There we go. get started. Just clean up the excess. I'm always ready to uh, show you my mistakes. So I've just tried offering this up and I've tapped this round too far. I need this facing this down here like that. Um, so I'm gonna to have to tap it again and go around another three quarters of a turn now to get this tight to in the right place. So I've got to take it apart, clean out all the uh, thread sealant again, uh, and have another have another go. Um, which, which is fine. It's no big shakes. It's just a little bit of extra cleaning. But the thing I am a bit annoyed about is I've wasted a whole bunch of this stuff, and it's really expensive. So damn. So. I've got it uh, facing the right way now, so it's facing down and we'll be able to clear the pipes out that way. So the next thing to do is to install the pressure release valve mechanism. So let's put the components back in the same order, I guess. Um, I'm just going to put, I've got the ball bearing, I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on that, drop it in. And then there's this cupped washer, so we'll see the cup goes on to the, I say obviously, but... Yeah, the cup goes on to the, you hope. And of course it's gone in the wrong way up. I need to get a magnet now. Got my magnet. So maybe the way to do that. So the ball bearing's in there. And we need to get, somehow, There's a spring. That bad boy. In there without the ball bearing falling out. There we go. And then 
this screws in with this rather dodgy looking washer. It's chrome, but it's all like pitted, it doesn't look really nice, but I'll put it back as it was. And there was some of the thread sealant around this washer, so we will clean, oops, sorry, not sure. We will clean that off, make sure there's no oil on there. And we will do the same. Put some oil on this wash, some um, thread sealant on this washer. I'm not sure. It's such a good idea. But that's when I took it apart. There was all this white stuff underneath the washer, so I assume it was. No. Ah. Oh. My luck has changed. It landed sealant side up. If that was a bit of toast, definitely would have landed jam side down. Right, so let me put some sealant on this bolt. Because this is just, a, this isn't a, a tapered bolt like the outlet. This is just a standard bolt fitting. So that's just going to leak oil out like crazy if we don't seal it up. And before I put that in, I'm going to, without getting any on the sealant, I'm going to squirt some oil in that on that spring. And then we'll screw this in. Now this, if you remember when I took it apart, for me, it was, for you it's a few minutes ago, for me it was days ago, it really did, it really was very tough. Now what have I done with the Allen key that I used to put that in? Right, I'm gonna go and find the Allen key. Right, found the Allen key. And if you remember, we used a bit of tube to get that off. So I'll pay it the same courtesy and put it back on with the same tube. I don't want to crack that case. Right, that is super tight. There we go. That is now re nearly ready to install. Final thing to do Final thing to do is install this AN8 45 degree fitting which is a swivel fitting um, and to fit this it is 3 8 MPT on this end and it will just screw I say just it will screw in so we'll put some thread sealant on this too I'm sort of making sure there's sealer in at least two adjacent threads. That's the that's the sort of rather than you know not, not just risking one, I'm not going as far as three. So I'm just doing two adjacent threads at any one point has got sealant in it. And it doesn't matter what angle this goes on because it's a swivel fitting. So we'll just snug it up nice and tight. Try and tighten the vice up a bit more. Don't want to overdo it. This thread seal is squeezing out, which is a good sign. That means it's making a good seal. Probably wasted some, probably put too much on, but better that than it leak. Right, I don't want to do any more than that. You can over tighten these things, can't you? So, wipe off the excess. Okay. 
So there we go. Fuel pump cover ready to fit. Gene Berg, slightly modified. So I've tapped the outlet a bit deeper for clearance issues on the moustache bar. And we've taken it completely apart, cleaned out the mechanism just to make sure there's no bits of crud in there. Um, and we have modified the cover to make up for the fact that this hole doesn't perfectly align with the hole on the CV Performance pump. So it should get the same volume of oil. I mean, I haven't measured it, but uh, it should roughly get the same volume of oil going through it. So there shouldn't be any issues there. Um, so for um, what is essentially a very standard piece of kit, quite a lot of work has gone into this um, and we'll bolt it on now. You can see whilst I've been waiting for parts to turn up, I've protected the pump from dust and contamination by covering it with tape. I've noticed there's a little bit of tacky insulation on there, so I can put some WD-40 on paper towel and just clean off any glue from the tape. And a bit of paper towel in there. So that's all nice and clean and ready to go. the pump cover and have a gasket the thinnest one or the standard size so we'll put the we'll use the CB performance studs and pray that they're long enough and not tested it out this looks the same sort of thickness not measured it as the, oh God, let's do these one at a time, keep falling out. That's one. Not putting any Loctite on these. Number one of these was tricky to get in before, wasn't it? You can't really you can't really see and even if I tried to film it for you, you wouldn't really get a good look at it but the clearance on this against this is I mean I've got quite a lot of clearance there now on the AN fitting at the back end of it which does twist around a bit um, I've probably got like about six mil and on this side I've probably got five mil so it is really tight I mean it, it has been an adventure in experimentation to get it to uh, to fit. So let's wind this in. They're too tight to do by finger. Just gonna get them close-ish. And these, I can't find, I haven't found any, I think, I haven't found any information on Gene Berg's site about what torque his cover should be torqued down to. And I haven't seen any information on CFP Performance's site about what their cover should be torqued down to, but all the books you know, your Bentley manual and whatnot, say the 8mm studs, which this is, 
go down to 14 foot pounds. So that's what I did last time, belatedly. And uh, that's what I will do this, this time too. So just getting them in snug. Still a long way to go on that one. There we go, that's snug. And then once they get a bit snugger like this, just go across diagonally. Fourteen foot pounds. Which isn't a great deal at all. And we'll go back here and check them all. Make sure they don't move. There you go. Now with the pump installed, I can put the pulley tin back on, the pulley back on. I can now bolt up the exhaust as well. So we'll save that for, I'll do all the pulley, the tin and the pulley off camera. Same procedure as last time. So I'll put the pulley tin back on, the pulley back on, and some of the tins. And I won't bother filming that because we've, I've already filmed that, shown you me doing that. And it's exactly, I'll do it exactly the same way. Um, so that's a lot of effort has gone into getting that full flow system working with this this early bus motor, same for late, uh, early bay motor rather, um, same for the late bay motors as well, with the moustache bars, a lot simpler on a split bus, uh, where you haven't got any of these mounting issues, front mounting or rear mounting issues, engine mounting issues. So uh, I'm happy, um, uh, ish, I mean, I'm, I'm annoyed that I've had to fork out another 80 quid for a different, oil pump cover. Uh, I'm happy that it's uh, Gene Berg because I really love Gene, Gene Berg's philosophy um, on engine parts um, and I'm pleased it's got uh, an extra pressure release system built into it although that's another thing that can go wrong. It says in the, in the information that came with the, the product that any particles in the engine and we all get particles in our engine can cause bearing to stay open and, and then create low oil pressure which can be dis obviously disastrous to <laughs> your engine the bearings etc so we'll see how that goes uh, I hope it works out it's the only solution I could come up with uh, to get clearance I couldn't actually find available at the moment a full flow cover without one of these pressure release bearings in it that that had um, the outlet flush with the side of the pump whereas the CV one and all the other ones I've seen uh, they have uh, the outlet sticks out by about a quarter of, a quarter of an inch and that quarter of an inch makes all the difference with the clearance with this moustache bar and this is a modified moustache bar with even more clearance than a stock one so um, good luck if you're using a, a stock moustache bar I would probably suggest modifying it in some way I was thinking of at one point to modify this but I was you know it's a brand new moustache bar why modify it when I know there's a solution the guy that sold it to me sent pictures of what other guys have done in this situation so I I'm denied because I was like oh, I could modify it for free <laughs> or I could pay 80 quid for a new uh, cover uh, so let's hope I made the right decision there anyway thanks for watching <laughs>